International Podcast Day 2017. Thank you for joining us. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. I'll be the host for the next couple hours. Before we wrap this up, we're in the final stretch of International Podcast Day's live stream, but that doesn't mean your celebration of the power of podcasts has to end. Keep sharing and posting on social with that hashtag, International Podcast Day, sending people to internationalpodcastday.com to learn more about International Podcast Day and the other thing to do right now or do tomorrow when you get some rest again after this amazing day is check out our sponsors because International Podcast Day in this live stream especially would not be possible without our sponsors. So thanks to Blueberry, a full service podcasting company that provides hosting stats, uh, industry standard stats. They provide advertising opportunities. They create the WordPress plugin for podcasting. It's called PowerPress. You're probably familiar with that. 50,000, probably I think 60,000 plus podcasters now use that and much more. You can get started in podcasting with Blueberry in 15 minutes. Get started over at Blueberry.com. That's without the E's. So B-L-U-B-R-R-Y.com. Thanks also to Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Man, if you didn't see that video over uh, earlier today from them, they have an awesome space there. I was expecting just some small little cramped thing. They have an amazing looking studio and they're a full service cafe too with two working podcasting and video casting studios. Their grand opening was today. Congratulations on the grand opening. And if you want to check them out, visit them and uh, see about using their uh, facilities, go to studio21podcast.cafe. Also, thanks to The Messengers, a podcast documentary which shares this journey that we are on through podcasting, that we are all messengers. And you get to meet some amazing messengers and discover why people are motivated motivated to podcast and the incredible profit people get from podcasting. And it's not only about the money. Get your own copy of The Messengers on iTunes and Amazon at themessengersdoc.com. And thanks to Podable. They help you to find your next perfect podcast for you to listen to with recommendations tailored to what you're interested in. Start by going to play.podible.co. That's play.podible.co. And lastly, thanks to the Audacity to Podcast, Modern Life Podcast Network, and Podbean. Thanks to all of our great sponsors for their support. Please check them out. Please purchase what they have available to sell. That's why they're sponsoring this, because they want to grow their business and because they believe in the power of podcasting. That's why they're celebrating International Podcast Day. So please support our sponsors too. And big thanks to our sponsors. I'm pleased to uh, welcome Marcus Garrett for our next session here. Marcus is the author of, and I love this book title, and I love the concept behind it too. Oop. The book title is Debt Free or Die Trying. He is a big proponent to, uh, his main goal is really to help millennials see that living a debt-free life and living life period, and a good life at that, doesn't have to be uh, something that excludes the other one. And he has a co-host, and they talk about uh, personal finance and much more. So Marcus Garrett, welcome to International Podcast Day, and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you for having me. So um, I'm Marcus Garrett, uh, one half of the Paychecks and Balances podcast. And I think we're live. And I, all right, here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Marcus Garrett, one half of the Paychecks and Balances podcast. My co-host Rich couldn't be here today, so uh, I'm going to do my best. Don't worry, they save the worst for last. Uh, a few Paychecks and Balances housekeeping items. Be sure to use the hashtag International Podcast Day. Uh, we're on Facebook at Paychecks and Balances. And you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram as well. The show is at Pay Balances. That's P-A-Y Balances. Our personal accounts are at I am Rich Jones and at the Marcus Garrett with one T on Twitter because Twitter is a character hater and I'm not cool enough to get into the 280 gang yet. And two T's on Instagram. Uh, if you're in the chat room, feel free to ask questions at any time. I'll do my best to answer, but please keep in mind I'm the low tech half of the show. So anything probably more complicated than how do I turn my computer on or adjust my volume regarding tech stuff, I'm not going to be able to answer. But anything else, feel free. And I am following along with the chat roll uh, chat room. So 
after speaking for a number of years, I've learned that first and foremost, you need to make sure people are in the right room. So this is former relationship bloggers turned personal finance podcasters. I'll close my eyes if there's like a vast exodus, uh, just in case people are in the wrong room. I apologize. Hopefully this hasn't been a waste of your time. A little bit about our background. Rich is the paycheck side of the show. He's been working in HR recruiting by day for nearly a decade. Yes, he's one of those guys. That guy you hate and hope to hear from when you're looking for work and you're secretly mad at when you don't hear from, like, at least close the loop, bro. But I'll take this time to briefly apologize on behalf of all of you waiting for a yes, no response right now from a recruiter. And hopefully that recruiter isn't rich. I'll get that message to him after the show. I am the balances side of the show. By day, I'm a certified internal auditor. I've been in the audit field for about 10 years. For those of you who don't know what auditing is, in short, we're the profession you love to hate because we point out what you should be doing instead of what you actually are doing. And God, we trust and everyone else we audit. I'll briefly apologize on behalf of all of the auditors in the world and for those of you currently going through an audit as well. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm the author of Debt Free or Die Trying. <laughs> you can learn more about that at debtfreeordietrying.com for more information on that story. But today we're talking about paychecks and balances. So a little bit about the show. Paychecks and Balance is a fun and informative show covering work and money for millennials. Our vision and mission is very simple, not to bore you to death. Uh, I'll try to stick with that vision and mission over the next 45 minutes. I'm going to talk a little bit about our origin story, how Rich and I worked together online for five years before ever meeting in person, the inspiration behind why we started the Paychecks and Balances podcast, and how that podcast grew to become a top five career and personal finance podcast reaching over 30,000 downloads a month. So one question... I'll start with that I did receive offline because I did ask if anyone had any questions. And it was, where did you learn to write? Most people have the benefit of not receiving a true lecture until they get to high school or college. I don't know what that experience is like. My lectures came much earlier in life because my dad was a professor or is a professor because he's still alive. I remember young Marcus, about three years of age, scribbling together a Father's Day card from the bottom of my heart. And on it I wrote, I love you, Dad, scribbled in my little three-year-old handwriting. I handed it to my father. He skimmed it over. I could still see his eyes working back and forth. He took out his pen, click clack, and he scribbled in it. And I thought he was writing an equally hand-felt message, heartfelt message. And he handed it back to me. I opened it up expecting to read something loving from uh, my sire, my, my father. And it said, I love you, comma, strike through, father. Folks, I haven't called my father dad in over 31 years. And these and other similar grammar critiques went on for approximately the next forever of my life. And that's how I learned to write. So thank you for making me retell and relive that painful story. Um, listener, you now have your question answered. Paychecks and Balance's origin story. So how Rich and Marcus moved, worked together online for five years before ever meeting in person. <clears throat> in a world long ago, now forgotten, Marcus was navigating the ones and o's of the internet galaxy and on a malign world wide website called MySpace. MySpace, MySpace. On this distant website, I found my calling, writing first person stories about my life under the pen name wisdom is misery. If ignorance is bliss, then wisdom must be misery. With the success and recommendation of my top eight MySpace followers, I was advised to start a new phenomenon sweeping the internet across the world wide web, a blog. I'm so old, I actually remember the internet before blogs, and I actually remember life before the internet. But anyway, I didn't even know WTF a blog was. Uh, but I did some research and I started up my own website under the name, you guessed it, wisdomismisery.com. It's now defunct, but still exists more as a catch-all page. I was a now professional 
personal blogger from 2008 to about 2009. Uh, and that's when Rich entered my life and nothing was the same. In the year 2020, I was recruited by a covert squad of writers known on, only on the web by their multinational conglomerate code name, Single Black Metal. Here, I was introduced into the seedy underworld referred to as relationship bloggers. May this genre rest in peace 2010 through 2013. Um, some of my favorite times during this uh, CD underworld was I actually found myself on the Tom Joyner morning show defending, um, how can I put this kindly, the ability to step outside the parameters of your relationship respectfully respectfully. Uh, so I was on an audience of what I assume was millions. And I remember someone reached out to me and said, this wisdom is misery guy is on the radio talking about being unfaithful. And I knew I had made it. Uh, I found myself defending comments, fighting trolls, uh, basically living the life of a B-list celebrity blogger. Uh, I was in some ways living the dream from 2010 to 2013. But around 2013, uh, Rich emails me and I, I was starting to walk away from the blog game. I no longer had the personal blog. Uh, I really didn't have anything left to add to the seedy underworld of relationship blogging. And I'm a narcissist and I had nothing. I had nothing left that I could talk about. We are still talking about the same topics now, except we talk about them in 140 characters instead of 280, but it is what it is. So I respectfully walked away from the conglomerate single black male and the year was 2013. And I'm out here languishing in the internet. I'm on this thing called Twitter now. I really don't know what to do with myself. I'm lost. I'm, I'm wandering, uh, just trying to find my way on the internet. And Rich emails me one day and he says he wants to start a podcast. Side story, if I may detract for a little bit here. If I may digress, please excuse me. The movie Catfish had come out around this time. It just been released. I had not met Rich in five years of my entire life. He was just this, he was an editor. He just worked behind the scenes, this shadowy figure, much like my father, always correcting my perfect grammar and all the work that I put together, telling me where paragraphs need to be rearranged, arguing with me about words that didn't need to be used because I'm great at using words that I can't actually spell. <laughs> So I was convinced that's 1,825 days for those of you keeping track at home that I never met this figure in my life. I never even physically seen him on a webcam. So I reached the only natural conclusion. Rich was a catfish. I assumed he was in my head, this tech savvy 67 year old ish white woman who worked on black men's relationship blogs between collecting retirement checks most likely in South Dakota or Wisconsin. However, never one to judge, I agreed to do this podcast with Rich as soon as I figured out WTF a podcast was. So I started doing my research and the inspiration behind paychecks and balances began. So why stop blogging and move into podcasting? I was getting older and frankly, I was getting a little bit washed here. Uh, life comes at you fast, and I know some of you don't know what washed means, so I went to the internet source, Urban Dictionary, and it says, you used to be the shit, and now you ain't shit. Washed. Used in a sentence, MC Hammer is mad washed now. So hopefully we're all collectively, you can go misuse the word washed in your jokes on Monday. Feel free to malign the word, use it incorrectly, um, throw it in a sentence where it doesn't belong. But now we're all at least on the same page. Uh, I was also mentally writing the Debt Free or Die Trying book, which was released in August of 2016. We actually started podcasting about three years ago uh, with this pop culture discuss everything under the sun mix of personal finance mixtape career esque like podcast thing. 
and we failed miserably <laughs> to attempt to hold on to whatever was left of our youth. But I think we were just scared to talk about a serious subject. We, we didn't believe that anyone would talk about work, life, career, and money. Why would anyone listen to that? So we felt for this strange need to talk about like Beyonce and what was going on on uh, like entertainment and, and TV and VH1, all shows that we don't watch. So we're reading other people's blogs about these things that we don't know about because we're washed. Uh, this went on for like three years. Like this wasn't like something that we learned overnight. And somehow by the grace or whatever religious deity you do or do not believe in, this is a judgment-free zone, we managed to unearth some semblance of a following over those three years, releasing like 50 to 75 long one, two, three, four hour episodes. Um, and I realized during this time I was having more and more of these life, work, and personal finance conversation with friends my age, known as millennials, are washed. And we weren't talking about Beyonce. And nothing wrong with Beyonce. I am not trying to have the Bay Hive in my mentions whenever I get off this show. I'm just saying, like, I don't keep up. I think she released a, I think she released a song this week. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. And that's exactly the point. So I realized right around the same time as Rich that these are interesting conversation and no one seems to know what the hell they're talking about. We're all this collective 30 year old senior millennials as a junior millennial referred to me uh, not too long ago. I'm still offended by. Um, and no one seemed to really know what they were doing. And so I said to myself, what if we started researching these questions and answering them for a larger audience? We already had a podcast, but rather than try to force our current audience through yet another switch and rebrand, um, Rich may or may not have been texting and driving one day. Uh, hopefully the statute of limitations has passed on the statute of limitations. Um, and he came up with the brilliant name that I present to you today. Hashtag International Podcast Day. Paychecks and balances. Beep, 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 beep. Flex bombs, flex bombs. I don't have my soundboard with me right now, but I think you get the general idea. So it was an exciting time. Paychecks and balances is launched. Launched. We've got this idea in our head. We know what we want to try to accomplish. And so now I want to talk a little bit about how paychecks and balances grew to become a top five career personal finance podcast. Uh, for those of you youngsters, uh, younger millennials, juniors, freshmen, sophomore millennials, uh, consistency, I would say, is key. That's something that I've learned over this three year period and I've come to appreciate. Uh, we release every Tuesday. We're we're like the mail. I mean, just consistency. We show up hungover. We show up work over. We show up over, over. But every Tuesday, you will get an episode with some type of hopefully ideally inf helpful information in it that will not bore you or put you to sleep. Even if the episode is just to tell you that we are too washed to do this episode. Uh, we have many sods, we have Q&A, but every Tuesday we are going to deliver something <laughs> to the fans, to the people out there. Um, it's better to be great at one thing than mediocre at a lot of things. And I think with our previous show experiences, we were mediocre at everything uh, and not really great at anything other than chemistry, because by now I had finally confirmed that Rich wasn't a catfish. So that was a, a, a nice weight off my shoulder. I was able to interact with this non-catfish. That was real troubling for me. Um, and being a jackass of all trades is not a winning long-term strategy. We had this podcast. We didn't know what we were doing with it. We didn't know where we wanted to go. We didn't know what we were trying to accomplish. We didn't know who we were trying to reach. We didn't know why we were doing it. And so if you don't know what you're doing, any path will get you there. And we went down all the paths. And so another thing that I've learned in this three years, and I thank you, the international podcast community, is networking. Find your niche. Become great at it. I had literally wrote a book called Debt, Fear, Die Trying, yet I was scared to talk about money management. I'd been in audit for 10 years and I wasn't comfortable to talk about what I do for a living. Um, 
if you're not an expert in what you're already getting paid a salary for, uh, paying taxes on, law-abiding citizen, then what are you an expert at? Someone has already said, you know enough to do this job description, so surely you know enough to talk about it on the show. And I would say that would be accurate for, you know, obviously you don't have to talk about paychecks and balances because you know, we'd probably sue you, but you could talk about anything that you're already doing, find your connection, find your niche. If you build it, they will come. If you podcast it, they will listen. Um, and along those same lines, find other people passionate about what you're passionate about. I don't care. Now I am passionate about paychecks and balances, money management. Um, now I'm getting into financial independence and it's actually a very rewarding community that I did not know existed three years ago. I would have never known existed had Rich not reached out to me while texting and driving with this great name, Paychecks and Balances, and told me what a podcast was. Doing the research, I, as I opened with, I am low tech. Uh, I'm actually surprised that I have not crashed this very uh, podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that I was able to show up. So, you know, congratulations and backpats and kudos to me. Uh, without Rich here, so who's the tech savvy person on the show? But find other people passionate in what you do, interested in what you do. Bring that energy to them, and your community will grow. And along those lines, I say. Build your brand, uh, invest in yourself, because if you don't take yourself seriously, no one else will. You see me over here wearing this Paychecks and Balances shirt. I'm about this life. My friends know about it. My family know about it. My job knows about it. Anyone who will listen to me, I'll talk to about it. In fact, they probably want me to shut up about it. But this is something I'm passionate about doing uh, there is a lot of energy that comes with this and it is a self-fulfilling cycle. Uh, I give or try to give a lot to the community, but I feel like I get way more back every week. I feel like I'm indebted to the podcast community, our listeners, our fans, our show, because I get so much from them. So build your brand, invest in yourself. I hear a lot. Should I do the podcast? Should I do the side hustle? I would say don't quit your day job. But if you treat it like a side hustle, that's all it'll ever be. Uh, this is something that I enjoy and I want to do until the next medium comes out. And I don't even know what it is, but I'm excited about it. And I know it will come because I've seen it before all the way back to that malign website that probably no one has ever heard about with the top eight in the glittery gifs, uh, MySpace. That's where it all began when someone reached out. And what I found is that often people see in you what you fail to see in yourself first. So you'll be all insecure about, should I launch a podcast? Should I start a blog? No one will listen to me. And yet there are people out there right now, probably in my mentions, saying inaccurate information every day of the week, uh, like whatever. Just get out there, put your voice out there. And if it doesn't work, start over. As I said, I failed at way more things than I've succeeded at. And yet for some reason, people only want to remember the things that I've succeeded at. And I only remember the things that I failed at, but it doesn't matter. And I actually have some thoughts on that as well. Build your brand. Don't treat it like a side hustle that goes for your podcast. That goes for anything that you're passionate about. And I must repeat consistency and networking. So even if you suck, <laughs> if you continue to suck consistently every Tuesday, people will still come to listen to you. So uh, consistency can actually get you a huge following. We did 50 shows where we literally just show up and would talk, just talk talk about anything. We talk until we ran out of things to talk about. We had two hour shows. I think we had one two hour and 52 minute show. Our first show was like 90 minutes. So basically typical millennials, narcissistic, you know, we sat a mic in front of us and like, yo, y'all going to listen to this unimportant stuff that we got to say for 90 minutes. And here we are on International Podcast Day uh, with top five in Apple podcast. Sorry, they just rebranded and I always forget. Um, but here we are. We were at least consistent about being inconsistent and the people still showed up. So the big payback 
2016, 2017, I really feel like we found our lich. We found our lane. We officially relaunched Paychecks and Balances in March 2016, and the people were ready. We went from hundreds to thousands to hundreds and thousands to thousands like it wasn't even hundreds and thousands. Overnight success is what they called us. Even though we'd been working on this for 10 years, we had been podcasting for three years at that point. You used to call me on my cell phone, used to, used to, beep, 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 beep. Where preparation and opportunity collide, other people call luck, but y'all know differently as you have been listening today. In August 2016, we had our greatest month and most downloads, reaching top five in Career and Money and Apple Podcast after receiving over 30,000 downloads. We now get about 5,000 downloads every episode. Uh, we finally found our lane. We found our niche. We even had an opportunity to take time off so we could recalibrate and get ready. I don't want to name drop for another conference that we're going to. But again, finding the people who are equally passionate about what you're passionate about in the network that they're you're passionate about like it's self-fulfilling it's self-building it builds upon itself it's a snowball it's an avalanche whatever metaphor you use the a wave I, I don't know hello uh, international community so whatever beachfront or big wave snowball like thing that you have in your community that is the metaphor that i'm going for so I want y'all to have some takeaways from this so you just didn't have to, I don't want to be a hypocrite and you just had to listen to me talk for 45 minutes. Uh, what I've learned in three to four years of podcasting, again, probably most importantly is don't be afraid to fail. Actually, fail quickly. Fail as often as possible. Learn from your mistakes. Build and deliver a better product. Numerically, I've failed way more times than I've succeeded. I always succeed faster the next time around and better because of those failures. So if you're being um, stuck by what may happen or what may go wrong, for those of you con considering launching a podcast, considering launching a blog, do it. It's literally like three clicks. <laughs> and if I can do it, I know anyone can do it because I break things all the time. So minor note i'd also say along those lines is take pride in your work so get some solid equipment i'm using an atr 2100 mic so the first mic i used i actually don't even know what it was i think i like pulled it out of a desk drawer as a mic that i used to use probably on myspace yahoo i am aol <laughs> and I, I hooked it up and uh, that don't listen to that show it's embarrassing uh and i think rich let me go ahead like as a lesson learned I, it's painful to listen to that one, but luckily it's lost in the 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 inners of the internet somewhere, I hope, but unfortunately nothing is ever deleted on the internet. Paychecks and balances is, is much better. We came back with all the right equipment and everything we need to do. Having failed, I wouldn't say quickly, but having failed. Um, and I don't see podcasting as a new medium. I view it as a continuation of what me the internet, the community, the people have always wanted to do. Reaching out, connecting with, helping more people. And in this case, we talk career, money, finance with a goal of not boring you to death. Hopefully I've done that. And if not, I'll just think the best part of the show, the people that I'm indebted to every week and will never be out of debt from, nor do I want to be, our fans and listeners. We've got hundreds of five star reviews now. Uh, it's still inspiring to me to hear someone write in and discuss a personal finance change they've made or learned as a result of the show or blog, money they've saved, career moves they've made. We've had listeners write in that have saved thousands of dollars. We've had listeners that got lowered uh, interest payments on their credit cards. We have great guests on the show, knowledgeable people, subject matter experts in the field. I'm still amazed with the people that we've had on the show. I'm amazed with the people that we're networking with now that we're looking to have on the show in 2017. And I think 2018, New Year, New Us, will still be washed, but we'll know what we're doing. We've got a lane. We're very focused. Podcasting has been awesome. It's inspiring me to do better, inspiring me to learn more. It's inspired me to help and reach more people. Hopefully, I'm doing that today as well. And so as we 
I guess, uh, near the finish line here. Uh, we usually have a freestyle or a happy hour or open discussion on the show. So if you're in the chat room, if you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll be good. I can definitely talk for these next 45 to 25 minutes. I'll be fine. So for those who either joined late or you're wondering what we talked about, we talked about our origin story, uh, how I didn't reach or meet uh, Rich for five years, 1800 days. I was pretty sure he's a catfish. I have somewhat confirmed all he, that he's not, although I have some other suspicions now, but it is what it is. That's my co-host and the inspiration behind Paychecks and Balances, trying to help people reach more people, learn about work, career, and finance, as well as becoming debt-free or reaching what I think has become more important to us as senior millennials. We're 34 and 33 respectively, so we're dinosaurs on the internet, is financial independence, uh, which doesn't necessarily align with retiring early. It's just to have the money, the freedom to work when you want to work or not to work at all and to work when you want to, to be defined by what you want to do rather than people telling you how much you're worth and they're willing to pay you for you to define how much you want to make and to define ways to make it, paychecks and balances. And then how we grew to become a top five career and personal finance podcast. Some people asked, what are my favorite episodes? Actually, I'm going to say episode number one on paychecks and balances. It's called the Paycheck Plateau. <laughs> uh, I am Rich Jones has joined, beep, 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 has joined the chat room. Uh, please go in and harass him for not being here. And if you have any technical questions, he is there to answer. Uh, Paycheck and Plateau. One mistake millennials make during negotiations that can cost them over 600000 during the life of their career. I could tell you about it here or you could go listen to the episode because I'm not going to tell you about it here. But you could miss out on over a half a million dollars over your career just by making this one mistake. Now, that was the first episode. Like we came out firing. <laughs> Like, yo, I don't know why anyone showed up for episode two, but they did. You see where we are now. And speaking of which, another one of my favorites is episode 47, Barely Surviving on $500,000. I didn't add zeros. I didn't stutter. I didn't. It's not $500. It's half a million, one half of one million, 500, followed by three more zeros. Uh, we talked about a couple uh, struggling to survive on $500,000. It's actually one of our fastest downloaded episodes. Go check it out. It's actually one of our funnest episodes, too. I learned that I'm a broke boy and I don't know how to dress. That's why I brand my own T-shirts, because, you know, uh, I don't think I would struggle on 500000 But as we always say on the show, it's a judgment-free zone. It was a judgment-free episode. Go check it out. It's one of my favorites. And then I like actually pretty much all of our episodes with the guests because we have great guests. <laughs> uh, but some that I want to highlight, all of our guests are flagged on the website, paychecksandbalances.com. Check out the tags guest. Uh, a few of my faves are episode 26, Behind the Brilliance featuring Lisa Nicole Bell. That's an inspiring episode that led to the 10 pages a day challenge that I'll actually be launching Monday. The second, I believe, October 2nd. Uh, but either way, we'll be announcing that this month, 10 pages a day challenge. If you don't know what that means, go listen to episode 26 with at Lisa Nicole Bell. It's a great episode. Uh, episode 48, The True Cost of Home Ownership with Wealth Advisor Kirk Chisholm. Kirk did an analysis that found that homeowners over the course of 30 years might make a profit as little as $1,400 dramatic pause. And in that 30 year period, because of inflation, your $1,400 would only be worth $800. A dramatic pause. So uh, again, check out episode 48. Hopefully you are already not in the home buyer market, but if you are uh, not a homeowner, or maybe if you are, you, you, you want to depress yourself this weekend, yeah, it's a little late at night and about to wrap up anyway, if you're washed like us, um, go check it out. And then episode 51 was actually $500,000 struggling to survive. Revisit it with the Financial Samurai. Uh, this was a really fun episode. It was just great to land such a well-respected, well-followed guest. I felt like that was one of the ones where we were like, we made it. Uh, you know, like it was like, it's real now. 
So he shared the story as well as when he realized when it what's really important in life and his own life, why he walked away from a six figure income to pursue his dreams. <laughs> so I think we're at the close out. Uh, I think I'm getting a, the music might be playing soon. <laughs> so if there's any Q&A, I am in the chat room. Let me know. Help us reach more people. Find us anywhere on the social medias at Paychecks and Balances. Be sure to follow at Pay Balances. Be sure to retweet. Be sure to react. Like I said, network and consistency. Marcus, this has been fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing this. I, I like that you used the phrase senior millennial because <laughs> like I also am technically a millennial. But I don't think like they say, oh, millennials do this or they act this way or they think this or they do these things. And I don't do any of those things. I don't have that same mindset. So I like to call myself a senior millennial because I'm I'm very different from that. I also think their rebranding now is, is like a zennial. You know, you know how it goes. So I, yeah. it was actually a younger millennial that called me a senior millennial recently. We've been messing with them ever since. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. So thank you very much. Your book is Debt Free or Die Trying. Yes, sir. Sounds like a Bruce Willis book. <laughs> or maybe yeah, one that I'm, Bruce Willis I'm, should read. I'm open to movie opportunities, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. He's actually moving to uh, not far from where my studio is. Hey, hey, it's crazy. Yeah. Just let me, just let me know. Yeah. I'll, I'll okay. take a call. I'll take a call. So thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, doesn't look like there are any questions in the chat room, but this information has been fantastic. Once again, tell us where we can learn more information about you and connect with you on Twitter as well. I'm on Twitter at the Marcus Gary with one T on Instagram at the Marcus Gary with two tweets. And of course, you can follow the show at Pay Balances. We're also in the chat room. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Marcus, thank for you. being part of International Podcast Day. I'll let you go. We've got more coming up still, and we are in the final couple hours of International Podcast Day or a couple, however much time this is. So coming up, we have uh, our session from Ariel sharing the best friends are the friends who listen to podcasts. Uh, I, and I feel like my best friends are the friends who podcast, but also who listen to podcasts. Looking forward to Ariel's presentation. That will be coming up very soon. And International Podcast Day and this live streaming event wouldn't be possible without our fantastic sponsors. So again, thanks to Blueberry, Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, The Messengers, a podcast documentary, and Potable. Also thanks to our bronze sponsors, The Audacity to Podcast. That's an interesting thing. And Modern Life Podcast Network and Podbean. Now we're ending a little early here. So I'm okay. Hey, this is the live stream that I'm managing now. So I'm going to throw something into the live stream. And uh, you will see that in just a moment. But uh, I will go ahead and turn off my camera and I uh, mute the audio. So we'll be back in just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to throw in a bonus for you since we've got some extra time. And while you're hanging out before we have Ariel join us for the next event. Thank you. Keep posting to social with that hashtag International Podcast Day. It's trending on Twitter. And boy, the conversation and the things people are sharing is fantastic. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back. We'll be back in just a little bit.